It is a great honor and a privilege to introduce Hazan David Aktivitzer. We're here in your beautiful apartment in uh, Proti Hills in Shoresh and it is such an honor and a privilege to, to be with you today. And David, if you can mention, you wrote this incredible book, A Courage to Survive. It's a Holocaust memoir of yourself and your, your dear okay. wife. Um, if you could just mention a little bit about where you grew up in Poland and a little bit about your family. You had a very special family and a very special... You have everything here too. I too. know, but it's, it would be wonderful just to hear you <laughs> speak about just a little bit what you remember about Poland um, and Tarnopol, where you grew up. Yeah. So, how many were in your family? We were uh, seven children and uh, none of them survived. We were... When Hitler came in, uh, my sister and I my sister came over to me and said, do you want to come with, with us? She was married at that time. And uh, we, we are going inside Russia. Would you want to come with us? I says, yes, I'll go. And this was, that was actually saved, saved my life. And how old were you at this time? I, I was uh, 16. 16, wow. And David, can you just mention a little bit about your parents, Chaya and Yitzchak, growing up in, um, in Tarnopol? Yeah. You had a very good life. You had a... Yes, I was... Uh, I, I was born with a... In a, in a wonderful religious family uh, and uh, my father geared me in a Jewish life and uh, I studied uh, I studied uh, a little in, in a yeshiva before also and, uh, and then until uh, until Hitler was coming, he was coming close to Tarnopol. So uh, my sister came over to me, and she says, uh, uh, "I'm, I'm leaving Poland." I says, "If you want to come with, with me, or with us, with with." with her husband and uh, so I said uh, uh, yes yes I'll, I'll go and I was 16 years old and then she said uh, and, and, and I said this actually saved my life and your sister was Bronia Bronia and you had pictures in your book of um, your father yeah your father was um, can see very religious Yes, and, like, yeah. And he was a boot. He made boots. Yes. He was a very, very talented, talented man. He was. Uh, he created a, a booth. Uh, one of the, one of the shoes, and. Uh, they nobody could ever copy what what he did. He was a very talented man. Yes, he he created a booth, uh, uh, one of the booths, and uh, that he says it was. It was created, that boot was created without any kind of stitches around from 
from the from the beginning till the end, and uh, and the the carpet, the the in, the inside that you make it a booth was was taken out very very uh, magically, and uh, and uh, he 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 sent it he sent it before the war. There was a, there, 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 there was a thing that they, that they were trying to show, to show what what he could do. And anyway, the war finished it. Any questions? Yes. So you have a you had a brother Hirsch, and I'm going to just show the picture. Yes. A brother Hirsch and uh, your sister Hannah, and another sister Esther. And um, were you the youngest of your... I was the youngest of seven children. And let me just ask, you went to a, a Haida, a Jewish Haida? Sure. And do you remember, you speak about it in your book, on Shabbos that your, your mother would make from... Shabbos was a very important part in, in your Defin family. Definitely. Definitely. She would start preparing the, the, for the Shabbos meal, and what do you remember about Shabbos in the shul? And let me tell you, I was uh, I had I had a nice voice when I was uh, when I was a small small boy, and then they came the 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 chazan from the shul from the be, me me the big shul uh, came to interview uh, some students for the choir in, in the old shul and, uh, and I was uh, luckily chosen to, to be uh, one of the choir uh, members which was in, in the old shul that's just, uh, the old shul is, uh, was a famous shul. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, built in the, in the 17s. And, uh, and uh, this was the main shul of Tanapal. Yeah. And you used to daven with your father in a shtibel, in a small. First, first, certainly. And until I was chosen to go to to sing in the big shul, and you they had famous chazonim in the in the big shul. Yes, we did. We had uh, well, certainly Kosovitsky came a few times to uh, to uh, just to daven with the, in in the shul, and I had the, the privilege to sing in the choir. And uh, I remember Sirota, Sirota came, to, came to Davon Shul in in, in Tarnopol, and I had the privilege to sing with him in the shul, and I remember singing uh, uh, one of one of the uh, duets with Sirota when he came for it. Would you remember? Yeah, I, 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 I sang with with Sirota, the the famous with the Hazana, with the Hazana, Einenu Beshuvecha Letziyon Beshuvecha. Let's see you That was uh, one of the highlights of my life to to be able to sing with Serata on a Shabbat. Uh, he, he he came. Yeah, he was invited for Shabbat. And then there were some other also chazanim that would come occasionally to shul, and uh, we were 
I was lucky to be able to sing with with Sirota. and there was a the, there was another cousin that came from England uh, from Belgium that he came just before the war he was hired to the, our old shul and uh, but unfortunately he, he was caught in into, into, into the war and uh, he was uh, annihilated and uh, what other and David did your father was your father also did he used to have a beautiful voice Could that's he also what it is my father had a, a beautiful voice but but he was not a professional chazan but uh, but uh, all the chazanas that my father had and he gave it to me is it because I was uh, I was singing with him and then I was singing with the old in the old shul and I was it was a, a greatest pleasure to sing to sing in the old shul with uh, and any of your your brothers did they also have a uh, were they also gifted with a good voice no my uh, my my one of my brothers that passed away already uh, here in in Israel he 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 had a nice voice but he was more in acting than than just singing and uh, uh, otherwise we had a nice family. And growing up, did you ever have any anti-Semitism or from the Polish children? Did they ever? Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, especially before the war, you could feel you it. Could feel it. It was coming. Yes, uh, there were the, there were the Szkotsen, the, the Polish Szkotsen that that used to always uh, started to laugh uh, about uh, about Jews and about the Jewish uh, Jewish children Jewish friends and so on we had uh, not not a very friendly life before before the war did you have non-jewish neighbors yes a lot we had a lot of Jew, uh, non-Jewish laborers, and they, and they were very, very anti-Semitic, and very, very unfriendly. You could feel this even. Oh yes, especially when the war was coming closer. Well, then we felt it more and more. And can I just ask, with your sister? Bronya and her husband, when they wanted you to come with them, your parents agreed because it must have been a very difficult decision to. My sister comes over with her husband, and uh, just before the war, she says, "Look, I'm going, I'm, I'm going for." Uh, into Russia. But her husband was small. Pardon? Her husband her was husband. small. Yeah. He says, Would you like would you like to go with us? Uh, I didn't know what, what what's all of what's all about. And uh, and these six words that she said, Would you like to come with us saved my life. And you said goodbye to your parents and to your I said goodbye and that's family. it. And you never saw them again? That's it. You know what happened to your parents? I left, and uh, as as we know, they were they were uh, annihilated uh, by by the by the by the uh, Germans as soon as they came in. And um, David, can I ask when you went with your sister? Um, they decided to go to 
think he worked for the railways, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So they decided to go more in inland into Russia. Yeah, that's what it he was working for the railway, that her husband. And uh, this is what uh, saved us. He says, uh, he says, we are, we are going away. You want to come with us? And uh, I said, uh, I said goodbye to my parents, and and that was it. And you went to a town called Balashov. Yes. You remember? Uh, very much. And I think there was a non-Jewish Polish family that took you in. That took, took yeah, yeah, she, she has a Polish family from from the First World War that uh, that that uh, that lived there, and. Uh, we came, we came to Russia, and I was uh, uh, very, very good with my hands, and uh, so I went to work for the railway also, and uh, I, uh, I learned very, very first, very, very fast the trade of of uh, the of uh, shaving the, uh, the the wheels shaving the wheels of the uh, of the, uh, uh, the the wheels of the, uh, of the of the train and I was uh, very lucky to to be able to do it and uh, and I and I was very successful. And your sister was pregnant at, uh, at this time? That's right, with, with her daughter. But I think they sent Shmuel away. Yeah, they, they took him to, to, to the army also. Shmuel. Here we have a picture of your, your dear sister, um, uh, Bronya and... Um, Sarah. And Sarah. So how was it like growing, uh, being in a foreign, in the middle of Russia, was it difficult? Uh, you couldn't keep kosher anymore, it must have been very... Didn't even know what kosher is. But, I was, I was, I was integrated there with, with the, with the, with the Russians in Balashov there, and I, Worked, worked on the train, and I learned learned how to shave up the uh, the wheels of the train. It was a very very uh, wonderful uh, trait to be able to learn to to be able to uh, to, to to do, and uh, and I became a very, 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 very famous in, in Russia, which they, they called Astakhanovets. Astakhanovets is a, a very distinguished worker that that learned to, to, to do, to, uh, in no time, I learned how to, to, to shave the wheels of the, of, of the trains and the locomotives. And did people know that you were Jewish or at this time? Oh yes, they, at that time they didn't. They but it didn't make a difference? It didn't make a difference. You didn't feel in Russia there was this terrible anti-Semitism? Not, not at that time. Not, 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 not at that time when the, when the, when we, we became, and, 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 and the war was involved. It was, it was there. So uh, we were not, we didn't feel any anti-Semitism at that, at that time at all. And then I think you were called up or you had to then go to Saratov. Saratov was, yeah, it was a, was a big, big city. And I was, uh, I left my sister. Why did you leave? You had to leave? I was drafted. You were drafted? I was drafted. I was uh, 17 years old. And you wanted to join the Polish? The Polish 
the Polish army was not existed yet. It was later on when they uh, they established a Polish army in in Russia of whom of, of, of former Polish citizens that 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 ran away uh, before and then they, they established a, established a, a Polish army in in Russia and I and I was uh, drafted actually I was not drafted I was I was drafted to the Russian army but I uh, I, I asked them uh, when they established the Polish army if I could if I could become uh, um, a member of the Polish army because thinking maybe very near future when the Russians will beat back the the Germans and people will be will have the opportunity to go back maybe to Poland and I was thinking perhaps I'll I'll, uh, I'll find my parents alive and so on, which was just a dream. And uh, David Kenos, at this time, did you have any connection, any letters or any communication, or did you hear anything about your, your parents or your family back in Poland? I couldn't. There was no, no connection, nothing. When you said goodbye, and I you said goodbye. That was a goodbye for good. And you never ever heard again. No, that, that's that was finished. That must have been incredibly difficult. Incredibly thinking, thinking. Now they took me to the uh, to the Russian army, and I, uh, in early, uh, seventeen. And uh, thinking, maybe if we'll have uh, an opportunity to, 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 to the, the Russians will beat, beat back the, the Germans. So maybe I will have an opportunity to, maybe to see any of my parents. But that was just a dream. And you were fluent in Russian. You could speak Russian. Oh yes. You Russian, said very quickly. Russian and Polish and German I spoke and uh, this uh, helped me a lot in the in the Polish army when when the Polish army was organized. I was uh, it helped me a lot knowing different languages. I was uh, I was able to to translate from from Russian to Polish to German. And um, I just want to ask you, your 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 brother-in-law Schmoll, he was um, I don't know if you pronounce the word a, a, a gonitz. He was a runner for the railways. Right, right. In the, in those days. They didn't. Uh, they didn't have the communication that I had. Uh, uh, television and uh, this. So, so he was working. He was working for the railway, and he was. Uh, what was a runner? He was. He was going to w wake up the the uh, the Russians to come to to. Uh, so David, do you remember when your sister gave birth to her baby? Would you believe it that I remember like it happened just now? We came, we, we came, she was pregnant and we came, we came to, uh, to Russia and we settled 
in the city of Balashov and uh, she, my brother-in-law was working at the, at the railway station and, uh, and she, she was pregnant at that time, I didn't, and uh, I was there, I was there when she, when the baby was born, on January the, January the 1st, I think, uh, 42. The, the, uh, the baby and I was there and it's, it's a funny thing where we lived we lived with a with, with a family who, whose lady the lady was Polish from the first world war and she she uh, settled in, in Balashov and uh, and I happened to uh, when we when we left uh, uh, P P Poland, uh, I left I happened to, to to fall into her to this family to her family. She spoke Polish, and uh, I spoke certainly I spoke Polish, and uh, she was uh, her husband was uh, what do you call the like person? a midwife, a male midwife. Midwife, her husband, yeah, uh, her husband was a midwife. The name was uh, Zuckerkandel. Zuckerkandel. Yeah. Ah, good, very good. Wow. Yeah. And they helped deliver the baby. Yeah. And, and she uh, was, uh, he was yeah, the no, he, he was, was away. The, yeah. Wow. And. Uh, and she, she, Mrs. Suki Kandel, who was, uh, we, we ran away together from Poland to, to, uh, to, to, to Russia, and uh, she helped uh, with delivering uh, the baby, and also the, the person whom we lived there, he was uh, an accoucheur who helped uh, deliver babies uh, in, in Russia. A male uh, midwife. A midwife. midwife. It's amazing. And then very soon after you called, uh, they called Sarah or Sonia. Yeah. Her Hebrew name was Sarah. This Sarah. is the baby. And um, this is your niece. I will just show the picture again of your sister and uh, your niece, her baby, Sarah. And then soon after that, um, and uh, Shmuel was called up. Uh, Shmuel was called up to the to, to the army, to, to the, the working battalion, to the army, and uh, he uh, he wanted very very much to come back home, but uh, so but he was drafted. And uh, and I think what he did, he 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 cut off three three fingers. He cut off by thinking maybe this will help him to get back home to his wife. And instead of it, they, they put him to jail. Shmuel. And you were very close. You were close with Shmuel. You got on. Yeah, got on very well. Because we all ran away together from home. We ran away. And how long did he stay in the prison? He stayed for a long time because we 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 didn't see him for for a long time because he he went he went there was he cut. He cut the three fingers thinking be able to come home instead of they took him to prison so it was very hard because you um, you also were called up into the army yeah later yes and, uh, you needed a, a passport a Russian passport but you were Polish 
So there was also difficulty. There was a whole business there with 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 the passports in in Russia. But you know, they uh, because you were such a good worker, I think they. Um, they said they we're going to send you to Saratov, and that's when they they sent you to Saratov. Yeah, but your sister uh, Branya had stayed, stayed behind with a with a baby in Balashov. Yeah, so it was very hard for you to leave your sister, but you had no option. You had to go. I had to go. And what do you remember about Saratov? It's a big city on the Volga River. Yes, yes. When I when I came when I came to Saratov. It's a very, very big city, and uh, so instead of drafting me to the army, they, 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 they sent me to to work uh, on the uh, with with the uh, uh, salt salt yeah. with salt at the uh, at the Volga River, and. Uh, I worked for a little, little while. I couldn't work heavy. I was very, very thin. I couldn't work heavy work. So uh, I was asked uh, to uh, to relieve me if they could, uh, to could send me to something else to work uh, w with my hands, which I, I'm very good with my hands, but I couldn't work with the salt to carry sacks, sacks of, uh, of, of, of salt from the, uh, from the big, uh, uh, from the big uh, places that they used to, that they, they, made, they made me carry, carry salt sacks, uh, to uh, and then I I was I was very thin, and uh, I, I went and I asked them if they would wouldn't mind to to uh, give me another job because this is very 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 difficult for me, which they did. They they, 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 they let me, and then it was a whole a whole history later on. You were put in a bar you were in a barracks with other other workers. Certainly. And they were um, but very few of them were Jewish. They came from all different countries. Yes. And then you actually got a a visa you got your passport. They issued you a, a Russian passport. Yeah. I did. I Manipulated and here and there, I got one finally. And you'd occasionally meet like a Russian soldier, and you'd hear about whether they would take him or. But it was very difficult to practice. You couldn't yes, practice sir. anything. I didn't know when is when when is Yontif, when is not. Then um, your brother, Sh your brother-in-law Shmuel, he was then put in. He was in the prison at this time, and you tried to go see him. I tried to go to see him. I tried to bring him a a, a loaf of bread. I think but you gave it to the guards. And they gave it to they the guards. They never, they never, they never uh, delivered it to him. He never got it. What happened to your brother-in-law? To what happened to Shmuel? Shmuel was taken to army and to work, working battalion here and there, and uh, he was separated from my sister for quite for quite a long time. And uh, I, I was helping out as much as I could at my age, and uh, 
I didn't I didn't meet him until until after the war. Shmuel. And, and then you managed to how did you manage to join the Polish army? I when I was taken to the Russian army at the same time the Polish uh, garnison whatever it is was uh, uh, they will uh, they, they, they try to they try to make to to, uh, to have a to, 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 to have them uh, to, to have an army, so uh, I I asked if I I could uh, since I speak Polish and I speak Russian could I be transferred to the Polish Polish army there and they did and here is you a picture of you a very handsome young man in the Polish army uniform. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, you met a friend of yours, uh, Shmuel Pulmater. Shmuel Pulmater. Uh, yes, yes. Shmuel Perlmutter. Perlmutter. Perlmutter, yeah. We were both drafted to the Polish army. Perlmutter. He was also from Poland. And you became very close friends. And became good, good friends, and then, and then we, we, we stayed in the Polish garnison, the Polish army, very close together, and then we worked together also in the Polish army, and especially uh, me being Jewish, they. The, the Pollocks trusted the Jews more, much more than the, than the, than the, the Polish uh, uh, soldiers. So I was, uh, I was transferred to, uh, to, a, to, a, to a group where uh, I have uh, I, I have uh, worked for the, for the Pollocks, uh, them knowing that I am Jewish and they have trusted me with many, many, many things more as, as a Polish Jew than they, they would trust the, Poli the Pollocks. There, and uh, I was uh, I stayed there till uh, till after the war. And can I just ask, because this is very amazing, uh, in the spring of ninety four uh, of uh, nineteen forty four, in the spring of nineteen forty four, during your basic training in um, Zitomer, your platoon marched along the sidewalk and. Uh, this must have been very hard what you that saw. That was something unbelievable. And because I was there already in the Polish army and, the, and, the, and then we were in the city of Zhytomyr and we, we, were, we were put in groups to walk to 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 walk on the street, and uh, there, there, there we are, and Jutomer on, uh, uh, we were parading a, a group of uh, soldiers, and I look down, and I see Jewish letters, Jewish, Jewish things, and I, I realize. That the Germans, the Germans used you, you, 
used uh, some of the uh, the grave stuff. That is gray, yeah, grave stuff, uh, and they uh, and they made and they made from uh, the quarry, from the Jewish quarry. They yeah. used the. Yeah, we were wa the we tombstones. Were, we were walking. We were walking on tombstones. It must have been so difficult. So, and during this time, had you heard about the terrible atrocities that the Germans and Hitler had done? No, you hadn't heard. For a long, long time, we did, haven't heard until we went into Poland. Actually, to Poland when we came back for, with the Russian army, we came back to Poland, and I went and, and I and, uh, and, uh, the first the first time I I confronted uh, a concentration camp Maidanik. But you before that you actually went to Kiev. Yes. Uh, and in Kiev, there, there's also you have Babi Yar. You. Uh, that's an, that's another story. That was before you went into Poland. Yes, from Kiev we went so, to Poland. David, I know this is difficult, that, but that what is. happened when you went to Kiev? Because Babi Yar is a suburb of Kiev. Yeah, it, it is in Kiev. Yeah, I was there. And it's uh, and it's uh, I came we came in there, and then the the Russians there told me started to tell me story about the Babi Yar, about, about uh, the mountain of, of people that were killed and the, the, uh, the earth was still shattering because they were, they were killing in, in Kiev alone, they killed thousands, thousands of Jews they killed and, uh, uh, and that's what I found out first about the Babi Yar. Did you go to Babi Yar? I, I didn't have an opportunity of going but I was not far from it. I was not far from it. And, uh, and how was your reaction when you've heard this news? It must have been incredible to, unbelievable to hear. It's unbelievable. Could you believe you, could, you, could, you, you, could, you, you could, You could think you're getting crazy when you hear stories like this. It's, it's terrible. And then, uh, and then David, from there, um, it was it was Mina Shemaim that you were in the Polish army because you were able to to to, to go back and to see and, and, and to see some of the things. And I think the NKBD, the which is it was the KGB afterwards. They interviewed you and uh, they allowed you to go. Yes, they, they 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 gave me they gave me permission to to do to to do or or to to, to help them because I knew Polish, I knew German, and I, I knew uh, uh, I knew certainly. Yiddish and so on, they, uh, they, they, they they helped me, they helped me to, 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 to see, especially to, to, to go in, to go in to, uh, to, 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 uh, to Maidanek. I just want to show before, here's a picture with you and your, your very good friend, Shmuel Perlmutter. Perlmutter. And before you went to Metallic, you went to the city of Helm. Yes. And in yes. Helm, you received orders to send papers to Lublin. And Lublin, we know that's where we have Kochme Lublin and that's Rebmer Shapiro. Yes. 
We have the. Um, you had heard of Red Man Shapiro? You had heard of Red Man Shapiro? Yes, yes. You yes. knew about uh, yes, sure. Chachma Lublin then. Chachma Lublin. Uh, and Lublin, when you went there, had just been liberated two days before. So you were one of the very first. Yes. Foreign, yes. well, to come back into Lublin. How was it like going into Lublin? Because it was once a very big Jewish city as well. Certainly, it was a, yes. it was a, a major Jewish a city. city. A city of learning, Lublin. And I came back, uh, uh, a lot of people were in hiding and they were com coming back also from, uh, from hiding to and to tell stories what what happens what what was what as you know when we start thinking back it's like you're you're getting crazy to be able to no. to, to absorb what the what what the people were saying and then what, what we saw Ourselves. So they told you about Madanik, which Cer is a suburb of Lublin. It's, Certainly. It's, it's really a suburb of Lublin. Yeah. And yeah. you went as a Polish, in the Polish, as a Polish soldier, you went to Madanik. Madanik, yes. Did you have any idea what, what was you were going to see? Not think. Not I think I didn't know what a, a concentration camp is until I came in. To Maidanik. It was uh, unbelievable to see corpses lying on the floor which they were not, the Germans were not able to, to, uh, to, to wash, wash away the their their story and it, it was it was unbelievable to see Maidanik to come in to see to see corpses that they were not still able to bury and uh, the the ovens the ovens were still open and people were not will not uh, be able to to, uh, to 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 bury the people they were just there and uh, it was uh, it was very horrible horrible and you saw the gas chamber oh certainly while I was there I saw them and I saw I saw I saw corpses still where they were they were waiting to be put in to burn oh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and they were still there so you were one of the very first people to, yes. to actually go into Madanik. Madanik, yeah the Germans ran away before they could destroy the evidence the, the atrocities the terrible and atrocities and everything was in front of us all the bodies, the, uh, the, ch the, the uh, chambers, were almost still lying there, we couldn't burn them. Were there any, any yidden that were still alive? In no, but there were some Jews that came back from hiding, which close from my Danik. They came back and they start telling stories, and uh, it's horrific stories. What can we do? And David, can I ask you when you saw? I mean, I was in Medanik, and my 
I think it's the worst place on earth. When the when were you there? In about three years ago. Oh. And it was still the same. They haven't changed it. It's exactly the same today as it was then. Yeah. The same. They haven't changed anything. And you go there, and it's inconceivable to think. But you were there That's before. Was there. You were there from the very big when it was just straight off two days after the Germans had left. Yeah. And I didn't know what a, what a, what a Maidanek or, or a concentration camp was until I saw, until I saw. And when you saw the crematorium and when you saw the... Everything in front of me. And the smell, terrible. So these images must have haunted you forever. Once you see something like this, certainly, certainly. I, I, I try to forget. It's not, it's not easy. But uh, things like this, you don't forget so fast. And David, which, which we found very hard is. The people living in Lublin, the the, po the Poles they were living, it's really a suburb of Lublin. Certainly. You see this, you walk out of Madanik and you see Lublin right. And they let it happen and it was so close by. It was yeah. So, no one could have said they didn't know because the chimneys were burning Certainly. and the smell and the screams and... Is that the worst, the worst? images you've ever seen. You can't see worse than that. To, to get in to get into a to an image of a of, of a concentration camp, this is this is uh, the worst thing you will, would want to see. And how long did you how long did you stay in Madanik? Where? When you went to Madanik. How long could you, were you there for? Oh, well, I was, I was there a, a few days, a few days, and, uh, but it, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. It's, it was hard, hard to take, to see, to see this, this scene. Did the other Polish soldiers say, or when they saw this, or were you together with any friends of yours when you went to Madanik, or did, were you by yourself? I was by myself, and uh, and, uh, and and the Polish ones. Mm, so, yes, 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 no, no. Other. I couldn't couldn't take it too long. And David, when you went back to the base and you told your friends or you told the people what you had seen, could they believe you? It's, 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 so you told me. So you told me. So I heard. So now I heard. So that's it. But what I saw and what I felt and what I dreamt this you can never you can take never it away it. you can never erase it and there was no one in charge there was no one you could just walk in and walk out there was yeah, but it was just, uh, it was, was off my everything. I couldn't. Okay. And you saw, you went, when you went inside, you saw where they had stacked up all the, they had put all the shoes together, all the... All the, the, the barracks. The barracks. 
One place, all the glasses, one place. It's unbelievable. The, 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 to see a, ba a barrack of, of female glasses sorted out, men's glasses, shoes, men's shoes, female shoes. Uh, all, all, it's uh, it, unbelievable things. How could this happen? And you saw the canisters of the Zyklon B? You saw the canisters of the Zyklon B? Uh, the, the chemical, the Zyklon B? Oh, yes. You still, still saw the, the ovens and you saw some, some, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the the cyclone B uh, thing, which was not used yet, didn't have a chance to use it, and it is. Uh, what, what can you say? What can you say? It's hard. It's hard. It's, so David, you, you, you say that when you, it was a hundred kilometers that you had to drive back to Khelm and you couldn't say a word, you, you were in silence for... No. And then you told this to, to Shmulek. Perlmutter. And you, afterwards you just both couldn't speak, you couldn't... No. There are no words. And I'm sure this must have haunted you forever. It's haunting forever. And, and, and on the other hand, I tried to, to see if I, can, if I can forget some of the parts and not to start living over this this the sceneries but uh, it stayed it stayed with me for a long time and did you go to Warsaw because part of your unit was sent to liberate Warsaw. Yeah. Were you part of that unit that went to Warsaw? Which unit are you thinking? The Polish unit, your, uh, Pol your unit. To, 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 deliver, to, li to deliver the the secret papers? Or to liberate Warsaw? Did you go back to Warsaw? Close to Warsaw, but then, then, then we came back. But uh, I was uh, I was there with uh, with the uh, uh, papers which I was supposed to deliver, uh, which I did, and came and came back from from Warsaw. And Warsaw was completely destroyed by that time. And you had heard of the Warsaw Ghetto or the? Oh yes. That must, that must have given you a little bit of pride, knowing that... Yeah. It did. You know, David, uh, interestingly, it took the Germans longer to destroy the Warsaw Ghetto than to capture the whole of Poland. It's an amazing fact of... That, yes. that, that the Yin with so little... They kept the, the, it took the Germans longer to destroy the Warsaw Ghetto than it took them to capture the whole of Poland. It's, it's an amazing, it's actually quite incredible. That, that is quite incredible. But when you heard about the Warsaw Ghetto sure, uprising. Sure, sure. I heard. And in Helm, there was also once a Jewish uh, big presence in Helm. Was, when you went back there, was anything left? Uh, Jewish wise or? No. 
there were a lot of people that were in hiding and the, they just came back to to Helm and uh, from around Medanic and so on uh, and then the, they started to tell stories of what happened and what, what And then your unit was, I mean, it was, you, you really witnessed history. You being in the Polish, that you volunteered to go into the Polish, you were very, you were able to then go and um, you were asked to, um, to liberate parts of Germany. Yeah. And from there you went to, you went to Dresden. To Dresden, if you went back, yeah. And uh, how was it like going now uh, into Germany after you had seen what had happened, and now you go into Germany and you see the perpetrators? It wasn't. It was. It wasn't a pleasant, a pleasant picture to come and to to see to see the Germans in in Dresden and the, the, the closer uh, the other. Uh, Places, I. Uh, it's, it's. It's not too, too pleasant. And then when you went to 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 uh, liberate to Dresden, you heard. Um, there was, you heard of somebody shout out, David, David, and you looked into the eyes of Sam Yachnuk. Yachnuk. Uh, he was a Jewish boy who you knew from Saratov. Right. Saratov. Yeah, I don't think he survived. That same day, you met yeah. each other, and the same day, unfortunately, he was killed. Yeah. yeah. You really... You experienced things that no one could ever imagine or dream. And how long did you stay in Dresden? Not too long. Not too long. And David, when you heard on May the 8th, that, that the war had, that the Germans had surrendered. How was your feeling knowing that this terrible, terrible, terrible war had ended? The war had ended and, and on the other hand it ended with hope perhaps I will meet somebody of the family and somehow, somewhere I don't know how, but uh, here we are, we are free. Where, where are you planning to go? What are you planning to do? Didn't know. I didn't know. What will be with me? David, you know, I'll just mention because it's very, it's very difficult. But when you were a little boy, you wanted uh, a bicycle, and I think you asked your parents for a bicycle. I never got one. But your brother, he. My brother, my brother got it, and my father told him, "Don't send it." They he did. was afraid. To I'll inj get injured. I was a very, very delicate, delicate boy. And when you went to your brother in Krakow, you yeah, saw your bicycle. Yeah, I went to Krakow and I saw the, I saw the, I, I saw the bicycle. 
And then when the armistice was signed and your division was sent to Krakow, you went to Krakow, and immediately you went to, this was your brother Hershey, you went to his apartment. That's true. I came in, I knocked on the door, and uh, a woman opens, yes, can I help you? I says, uh, well, I used, to, I used to have a brother who used to live here. Well, he's no more here. And that was it, and I saw the bicycle. You saw the bicycle, your bicycle? My bicycle, hanging on the wall. And you saw the furniture inside? Yeah. And yeah. she didn't let you come in, or? No. That was heartbreaking. And you never saw her she again? And even the pictures, the pictures were still hanging on the wall. Yeah. And your sister yeah. Hannah also was, she was also in Krakow. Who is that? Your sister Hannah. Hannah, yeah, but uh, they were too, too, too far apart. Nobody knew where she was, what she was, when. Uh, and did you go back to your town, to Tanapov? Never did. You never went back? No. I never did. Even after was, the war? You didn't after, want to... I meant after the war. I, I always had a desire to uh, to take a trip even from from uh, from here from Israel and uh, I never did and while you were in Krakow your sister Branya returned from Russia to Tanapol she went to Tanapol and to look to search for your Fam parents and family but no one survived mm. and she wrote to you and she said that her and Sonia Sarah, they were really relocated to Baiton, but her husband Shmuel, he didn't survive either. No. But then you got a miracle, you heard a nace, that your Bronya got word that your brother Yechiel, was that, alive. Uh, he was alive. He was constricted in the army. So what happened with, uh, with your brother, with Yechiel? How did he survive? He was taken to Sibir, you know, with, with a working battalion. With a with a working battalion. He was he was right from from the from the beginning he was uh, taken to to Sibir. But his wife Salka and their daughter, uh, unfortunately they didn't survive. Mm -hmm. It's so sad. It's so they say she was a, such a beautiful woman with, with a gorgeous with a gorgeous daughter Genya and her name was Salka Sala and uh, it was all the all the all the during the war he kept a picture uh, in, in in his in his bosom my my brother of his wife and daughter and he thought maybe and, and I heard that a few times the uh, the Russians were uh, the the Germans when we were taking some people away and that that my brother's wife threw herself from the train and thought maybe she and she threw the daughter and and then and herself thinking maybe this way she will hiding 
or hiding herself, and maybe she will survive. And she went back to, she went back to the, uh, to, 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 to the, uh, to the city, and uh, was taken away with, with the next transport. David, yeah. your uh, Max, I don't know if you remember Max, he was uh, from Tarnapol. He had also been in Siberia with uh, Yechiel. Yes. And he, he arrived back and he met uh, Bronya. And unfortunately, he also, he's, he wanted to find his wife and children, but they also died. And he so and uh, Bronya so decided Mar to get Mary married. Bronya, yes. Mary Bronya, they came back and they had a son and, uh, and then they came to Israel. And, uh, he died, he died here in Israel a few years ago. And then what happened? Where did you decide to go after, after you were in Krakow? You're talking about after the war? After the war. Well, I went and sat down on a, on a chair and, uh, and I was saying to myself that David, here you are. What, what is it going to be with you? Where are you going to go? And what, what kind of a life are you going to fashion? And then there was a, an advertising. I, I lived in Germany at that time. And uh, after the war, were you in the DP camps? DP camp, yeah. Do you remember the name of the DP camp? Ulm. U Ulman Donau. That's the city. This is where, uh, where, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Albert Einstein was born in Ulm. Yeah. And in the DP camps, there were other from Yidden you could. From, I don't think so. But there were other Yidden. There were, there were Jews who were thinking, what, what, where, when, when. And uh, there was uh, an advertising. Uh, if uh, if you're, and I was. Uh, 20, 20 years old, 20, 21, but I made myself even younger. And I said, uh, well, there was an, an advertising to have an opportunity to go to Canada. Canada, I have, I have nobody in Canada, I don't know about Canada. I don't know what Canada is. I've never, never seen Canada, and I, I made myself uh, a few years younger because that's what we, that's what they wanted, and uh, I, I had an opportunity to go to Canada, so I went. But can I ask, how long did you stay in the DP camp? Uh, for about two years. For two years. And what did you do in the camp when you were there? Oh, what we did, uh, they, they, had, they had classes from ORT. They, uh, so uh, I, I took, uh, I took a, a course of, uh, I, I was good with hands, a uh, course of, uh, of uh, saddle, 
saddle making. So uh, I was uh, I was good with it, and then uh, a little later there was a, an advertising uh, that uh, if you're below below is uh, 20 years old, you have have an, an opportunity maybe to go to Canada. I think it was Canada allowed that they would take in. Jewish uh, orphans. Yes, and I was one of them. I was one of the orphans. Uh, Can I just ask, David, before in the DP camp, did they have services for the Chagim, or uh, they give you kosher food in the camps, in the DP camps? Whether it was kosher. I'm not hundred percent sure. But did they have? But did they have but, Shabbos services? But, but but here and there they had a Shabbos service, but not not the real the real thing that we had. The main thing is our our aim was to leave Germany, and uh, many people have gone to different countries. Some of them went to Australia. Some of them went to uh, to England. And uh, I went uh, I went to Canada. And was it ever an option to come here? It was still under the British to come to Israel. To, well, it was British Palestine under the British. When Did you ever think of coming to Israel? Uh, yes and no. I was uh, at that time they still did not have the the opening like when the the brecha would come. From Israel, they were sent some people uh, to, uh, to to see whether uh, to, to to come to come to Israel. But there was uh, everything was uh, everything was closed. It was still under the British. The British yeah. rule. There was a mandate, yeah. Yeah. and they had illegal. It was illegal to come. And that's certainly. And then. Uh, I had uh, I had the opportunity to go to Canada, and there I went. And on the ship, you met your your wife. My wife. So David, we will continue, but I just want to thank you because it is it's unbelievable that you. Uh, um, I just want to really be no words to thank you. Um, I'm so grateful, David. Um, it was a pleasure that, to meet you. So David, I'm so grateful to you and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. David, your story and what you wrote in your book and what you've been through is absolutely, there are no words. There just are no words. And I'm so grateful to you that you, uh, that we've met and uh, I know your, your family in Beitvagan but to meet you after reading your, your book and to hear it firsthand, it is the greatest schut in the world. It yes. is such a schut for me, I cannot tell you. It's a pleasure. I just want to ask you, and I think all the listeners would want to ask you, you're wearing a yarmulke. You've seen so much, so, so many hard things in your life. How did you keep your imuna? How did you keep being from and uh, becoming a cousin? Praying to Hashem, it, it's it's unbelievable because this is this is the greatest testimony that somebody who has been to Madanik, who has seen what you've seen, to remain from, to have emuna, and to choose an occupation to be a chazan. How do you explain it, David? All right. First of all. I I grew a family 
I grew my son who is very orthodox his, uh, his children are very very orthodox and uh, I it was just a natural thing when I when I uh, stayed alive and I built a new home new wi uh, wife certainly and, uh, and, uh, and, and my son and sons and, and then uh, we, we grew we grew grandchildren and great grandchildren and we were, we were all all this generation I was very very happy to to be to be Jewish and uh, you you've got uh, two sons and a daughter I got two sons and a daughter and they're all from they're all yeah my uh, my daughter unfortunately uh, died uh, and from a head, a head, uh, a head injury, and my son, my son, and my other son, and all the children and great grandchildren, they're all from, all very, very, very from, and very happy, and we are very happy to to have this kind of a family. It really is a courage to survive. And David, I just want to ask you, what message do you give, what message do you give to your grandchildren, to the future generations? What message can you impart? Well, there were, there were times that I sat down with them, with my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and I was telling them the story of my life, which was not a too happy story. And uh, I was great and I was happy to, to part with my knowledge, with my past, whatever I had to, to, to the children and uh, and uh, they, they grew up to be just wonderful, fine religious children. We're happy to be with them. And your message to future generations to... Yes. That's your message. Yeah, that's that definitely. Definitely. I'm glad to meet you. David, thank you so much. I am so grateful to you. I cannot tell you. I'm so extremely grateful. You should just at Mavi stream how, how in, in good health and happiness and nachas from your beautiful family. Thank you. And thank you. And how, how did we how did we get uh, in contact? You, you, and your family. Your my... your dear son and his family are my neighbors in Beit Vagan. But David, thank you so much. I am so grateful. It's my pleasure and I'm glad to have met you. And I want to wish you a Shana Tova and Koltov. And a Gmachasimatova. All the very best, David. All the best.